Welcome to our broadcast today. I'm Jerry Savelle, and with me is my daughter, Jerry, Jerry Savelle. And we together are going to be talking about taking the limits off of God. I've said it so many times, and I want to say it again. God wants to do some big things in your life, but you've got to take the limits off. You know, it's an amazing statement. An unlimited God can be limited by his own people. Mm -hmm. God is totally unlimited. God can do anything. The Bible says, is anything too hard for the Lord? Yet his own people can limit him. And I'm going to talk to you about the two primary ways, actually three primary ways that they limit God. Number one, small thinking. Number two, negative talking. And then number three, forgetting what he's already done for them in the past. And I like to say it this way. If God's already healed you once, he can do it again. Right. If God's already met a need in your life, he can do it again. But you know, people tend to forget when they, when they come up on a new challenge, they tend to forget how that God delivered them out of that last challenge. And that's what Satan hopes you will do is forget what God has already done. So we're going to be going into that. But first of all, I want to read something to you from Isaiah chapter 55. It's probably familiar to you. In verse 8, this is God speaking. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, this is Old Testament. People didn't have the ability to think the thoughts of God under the Old Testament because they hadn't experienced the new birth yet. That didn't come until Jesus paid the price with his own blood and his own death and resurrection. But in the New Testament says, after we receive Christ, then we have the mind of Christ and we have the ability to think God's thoughts. And notice once again, he says, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So why did God give us the ability to have the mind of Christ? So we can think higher. Exactly. So we can think on a higher level. We talked about last week how that we must renew our minds. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And God has helped us in that by giving us his word, giving us the Holy Spirit, and giving us the mind of Christ so that now we can think higher thoughts. And then it says in verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I have sent it. So God is saying that when we begin to think his higher thoughts and we begin to speak his word, uh, and, and, and do, do, let me say it this way. When we think his thoughts and speak his word, then we have every right to expect that word to come to pass for us, just like it would come to pass for him. So this is talking about taking the limitations off of God. It begins by the renewing of your mind, learning to think higher thoughts. Now, we're going to go into Psalm 78, mm -hmm. where there's such a powerful revelation here. And if you have your Bible, I want to encourage you to open to Psalm 78. And I want you to highlight or mark the scriptures that we're going to be talking to you about. Now, let me say this. I learned 50 years ago the importance of renewing the mind. I was not a positive thinker. I was a negative thinker. I didn't think... Uh, very big. Uh, I didn't know that I had a right to, you know, and most of the time I was just living on wishful thinking, you know, uh, just, just hoping that this would work and hoping that would work. But I had no foundation. I didn't know the Word of God. I didn't know how to believe God. I didn't know how to uh, take the Word of God and apply them against my circumstances. That didn't happen until February 1969, listening to Kenneth Copeland and the messages that he preached changed my life. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I got out of the business that I had owned and began to prepare for full-time ministry, I spent every day, the Lord said to me, and I'm not suggesting anybody else do this unless God tells you, but God told me, you give me the same amount of time that you devoted to that business, no less than eight hours a day, studying my word every day. And in three months, 
I will change the way you think. I'll change the way you talk, change the way you believe, and I'll make a preacher out of you. And he did. And he did. <laughs> I locked myself away for three months. Now, I'm not saying that I didn't come out of that bedroom. I went in at six in the morning. I came out at noon and, and had lunch and had, you know, fellowship with you guys and, and uh, played with you and whatever. Then I went back in there about one o'clock, didn't come out till five o'clock, had dinner, did whatever mom wanted me to do, what uh, she wanted me to do with you guys. And, uh, and then I went right back into that bedroom and I was spending a minimum of eight hours a day. Sometimes it turned into 14, 16, 18 hours a day wow. studying the Word of God. And in three months, I was a changed man. Yes. I came out of there, I like to say, with a fire of God in my eyes, a power of God in my hands, a Word of God in my mouth, and praise God, things begin to change in my life. And you haven't looked back. And I haven't looked back, and it's been 50 years now. Yes. Amen. And it all began, though, with that. That's with right. The continuing and renewing. Yeah. And eventually, I began to think God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. My thoughts became higher than the way Jerry Savelle used when to think. When you hang out with a big God, then you're going to begin to have big thoughts. That's right. Just like Him. That's right. Let me go to Psalm 78. If you have your Bibles, Psalm 78. This is such a powerful uh, chapter in the Bible. It's, it's almost like a, a, a history in one chapter of the children of Israel and what God did for them in bringing them out of Egypt. And uh, you, you, can, you can read it, and it's so full of revelation knowledge. Now, I want to start with verse 7. It says that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. Now, highlight and not forget the works of God. Now, in this, and, and of course, the story of the children of Israel being delivered out of the hands of the Egyptians, God had to do some marvelous, miraculous things to bring about that deliverance. Mm -hmm. He got them out of Egypt, and, and, and almost immediately when they got out of Egypt and they began to experience new challenges, they forgot what He did. Now, I, I've, I've often thought, how could you possibly forget <laughs> the Red Sea and God causing the waters to, to come up in heaps and you cross over on dry ground. How could you ever forget that? Yeah. No matter what kind of problem you had, you know, they got hungry on the other side of the Red River experience. Um, the Red River, the Red <laughs> Sea. <laughs> I'm from Texas, the Red River, the Red Sea. And so they forgot what he did at the Red Sea because they were hungry now. Yeah. They were thirsty now. Don't you think if God can split a Red Sea, He could get you food exactly. in the desert? He could get you water out of a rock? But it sounds a lot like us sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, I know in my own life, um, I had a big financial thing come yeah. up, and God miraculously did that for mm -hmm. me. And he, I knew, I knew it was God. Well, say a year later, I had another financial thing, and I started to, like, how am I going to, you know? Yeah. But I remembered. If he did it back then, he can do it again. That's right. But we tend to forget that. Yes, and, and they were notorious for doing this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they forgot the works of God. In fact, I'm going to get down here in a little while, and uh, uh, where they kept saying, but can he do this? Mm -hmm. Can he do that? Well, he's God. I like to say, you can't be called God if you can't do things like this. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing's impossible the to him. The Almighty. The Almighty God. <laughs> It goes on to say, uh, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Mm -hmm. So once again, God is telling them, here's your problem. You forget what I've already done. You're not steadfast. You're not diligent. You're not consistent. And you're, you continually ask, but can I do this and can I do that? And you're putting limitations on me. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say in verse 11, they forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers. Notice he keeps bringing up the reason uh, you're not experiencing my best is because you keep forgetting what I've already done. Right. Now, as a result of that, it caused them to think small and to talk negative. You go down to verse 19. 
Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock, that the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide f uh, flesh for his people? Notice, they forgot what he'd done, the marvelous things he'd done. He said, marvelous things, wonders, marvelous works. And then they come up against a new challenge, and they're now asking, but can he do this? And can he do that? Mm -hmm. And notice how he said, you're speaking against me. Mm -hmm. When you keep asking God, but can you do this? And can you do that? Then you're, you're speaking against him. That's what he calls speaking against him. God says, I am God. There is none like me. Amen. And the Bible says, nothing is too hard for him. Now, if you keep asking, but can you do this? And can you do that? then you're limiting yourself and you're limiting him. Uh, he, God wants to do big things and he is willing to do big things, but he needs our cooperation. The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. You got to believe that he can do it. Right. You got to, the Bible says you must believe that he is and that he is able and, and one of the things that you have to believe that he is, is that he is the God in whom nothing is impossible. And you have to believe that he is able to do anything you need for him to do. When you keep saying, yeah, but, yeah, but, no, I'm not going to say what Jesse says, but. Uh, <laughs> we have an idea. <laughs> we have an idea. I'm going to say it. Jesse says, you need to get the butt out of the way. He says a little different, but you, you need to get the butt out of the way. Because every time you say, yeah, but, yeah, but, no, you're doubting God. That's small thinking. That's small thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they were doing here. And then it goes on to verse 40 and says, how often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? How do you suppose they did that? Small thinking, negative talking, and continually forgetting what he'd already done. Right. So he says, how often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. That is one of the most powerful statements in the Bible. A limited uh, or an unlimited God can limit him. And how do you do it? Small thinking, negative talking, and forgetting what he's already done for you. And the body of Christ is notorious for it. In fact, I've said often when I'm speaking in churches and I'm preaching from this, I say, uh, these people uh, were, were notorious for talking negative, uh, thinking small, and forgetting what he's done. And many of their descendants are in this place tonight. Yes. You know, people are still like that. You get around the body of Christ and some of them are still such negative thinkers, such negative talkers, and they constantly forget what God's already well, done. Well, he's an unlimited God. He wants to do awesome things in our lives. We talked last week about Ephesians 3.20. He wants to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask, think, pray, dream, or imagine. But when we begin to think small, forget what he's done and talk negative, yeah. then he's limited. Right. And we're so guilty of doing that so often in our lives. And that all goes back to the importance of renewing the mind. Because if, if you don't begin this process and continue in it, renewing the mind, then you're always going to talk negative. You're always going to talk uh, and think small. You know, I, I remember I, I had a wonderful relationship with Oral Roberts and I served on his, his board of trustees at ORU for many, many years. And, I, you know, he, was, he and Evelyn were in our home and, and uh, he traveled with me from time to time. Uh, I, I spoke in his conferences at ORU. Uh, many times he would call me and just ask me to come up to the office and talk there in Tulsa and, and share things with me. And I, I treasured every moment I had with Oral Roberts. And one of the reasons why is because he, he stretched me. Mm -hmm. He challenged me to think bigger. He had a, a plaque on his desk that said, no small plans made here. Right. No small plans made here. And, and, and you'd get around him. And I remember when I first got around him, I was so overwhelmed uh, just being in his presence. 
that I didn't want to talk at all. I just wanted to listen. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then sometimes when he'd ask me questions, and, he, and he'd, he'd ask questions that challenge you, you know, and sometimes I would, I would say something, and then I'd realize that was not the right thing to say. And if you talked negative around him, and I had this happen, he'd just turn his head and ignore you. I said, did you hear me? He said, yes, but I'm not listening. Wow. You know, if you talk negative or, or if you voiced small thinking, he'd just ignore you because he was one of the biggest thinkers I'd ever been around in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, you, all you had to do is walk on that campus and see this is a man who thinks big. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I love being around people like that that stretch you and challenge you. I, I tell the story how uh, we were in Kenya one time. He went to Kenya with me and you were there. Mm -hmm. And he and I were supposed to have a meeting with the president I was going to build a, a medical facility there. And uh, so I had arranged to meet with the president, ask him for land to build it on. Mm -hmm. And then after we finished it, we were going to donate it back to the nation. And uh, it turned out when we went to the, the state house, which is the equivalent of our White House here in America, the president had an emergency meeting he had to go to. And so uh, uh, they, he, he sent the vice president, some cabinet members. And so I'm, I'm asking them, for some land to build this facility on. And phase one was an outpatient clinic. So as I'm addressing the vice president, Brother Roberts is sitting to my right, and I notice out of the corner of my eye, he's writing something on a napkin, and then he wads it up and throws it off the end of the table and gets another napkin and starts writing on it and wads it up and throws it off the end of the table. This is very distracting, and I'm thinking, and he's doing this in the, president, in the presence of the vice president of the nation. I thought it's embarrassing. It acts like he's not paying attention. And, and I, I finally, after doing this about five times, he wrote this finally on this napkin again, and then he hits me on the arm and puts it right in front of my face and says, read this. I said, Brother Roberts, the vice president's talking to me. Can this wait? And I said, excuse me, sir. And he hit me again and said, read this. I said, excuse me, sir. I said, Brother Roberts, I don't have a clue what this says. I'll read it after this meeting is over. Go ahead, sir. He hit me again. Read this. I said, sir, I have to read what Brother Roberts has written on this napkin. Forgive me. I'll be right back with you. I'm thinking, this is the vice president of a nation. I could wind up in a dungeon somewhere, you know, <laughs> for not paying attention. And I said, Brother Roberts, I can't make out what it says. He says, study it. I said, I am. I don't know what it says. Would you please tell me what it says? Finally, he said, that's Oral Roberts spelled backwards. I said, is this what you've been working on for the last 30 minutes, Oral Roberts spelled backwards? <laughs> then I said, are we boring you? He said, you bore me. He bores me. Everybody in this room bores me. I said, why are we boring you? You think too small. Wow. He said, everybody in this room is thinking too small. And then he said, you can't build what you're wanting to build on the amount of acreage that you've asked for. We need 10 times that amount. Now, this is my project. I'm building it. But all of a sudden, we need 10 times <laughs> the amount of land that you're asking for. Ask him for 10 times that amount. I said, well, I feel led the Lord to have you <laughs> asking for 10 times that amount. He said, we can't do this on the amount he's asking for. He's thinking too small. We need 10 times that amount. He said, no problem, sir. We'll give you whatever wow. you need. That's and then Oral Roberts thinking. turned to me and said, don't you ever think small in my presence again. Wow. It changed my life. Yeah, it did. And today, you know what I do when people think small? <laughs> I write Jerry Savelle backwards on a napkin, praise God. <laughs> Amen. It was a valuable lesson. I was thinking too small. Yeah. And most of the body of Christ thinks too small. You know, uh, we go to God and ask Him to meet a financial need, and we think, well, I'm asking too big. Uh, are, are we believing God for a house, and we don't think He wants us to have a nice house? I'll, I'll just take the one down on the corner that you know, it's not quite as big or not quite as expensive. That's fine. But at some point, you're going to have to let God be God. Well, that's not Ephesians 3.20 thinking. No, it's not. 
when we just take what, I mean, he says abundant life, yeah. exceeding yeah. abundant, more than we could ever ask. He doesn't want us settling for the crumbs. Right. And you know? a lot of a lot of believers, Christians, think that way. You know that they got to stand in line at the throne room. Yeah. And no, he's limitless. He can <clears> meet <throat> every need. He says, "My God shall supply all our needs." That Amen. means all of us. He's an unlimited God. Amen. So three primary ways that Psalm 78, in particular, and you can find these principles in the Bible, in other verses, and other chapters as well. But the three primary ways that we limit God, number one, small thinking. Now, you're not going to change that until you start renewing your mind. You can't, just, you can't just change small thinking by, as I said on a previous broadcast, by just standing in front of a mirror saying, I'm not going to think small, I'm not going to think small, I'm not going to think small. No, this is not mind over matter. It's the Word of God. It's the power of God's Word. You get in the Word, you read it, meditate it by day and by night, and it's going to change the way you think. You're not going to be a small thinker anymore. You're going to come up to the level of His thoughts. And remember what it said in Isaiah? My ways, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. But He doesn't leave us there. Thank God He's provided the new birth. He's provided the Holy Spirit. He's provided the mind of Christ. He's provided His Word. And that enables us to think bigger, to think more positive, praise God. And then number two, you're going to have to stop the negative talking. And once again, you can't just stop negative talking by just trying to do mind over matter. You're going to have to do it by renewing of your mind. You know, when your mom and I first came into this 50 years ago, we didn't know these things. And we just talked just like everybody else talked. Where whatever they said on TV, that's what we said. Whatever they said in the newspaper, that's what we said. Whatever they said on the evening news, that's what we said. If they said, uh, you know, it's the flu season, we thought, well, we better get prepared for the flu season. Or if they said the economy's bad and we're going to have a depression, well, we thought, well, we're headed for a depression. They're going to be laying folks off and we thought we're going to get laid off. We just talked like them, thought like them. But when we started that process of the renewing of the mind, it began to change, praise God. So number one, you got to stop thinking small. Number two, stop talking negative. And then number three, don't ever forget the things that God has already done for you. And the purpose in doing that is if he's done it before, he can do it again. Right. Amen. You limit God by forgetting what He's already done. You know, I, I have experienced in 50 years of ministry many times where we had a financial challenge in the ministry, where we didn't have the money to do this, and we didn't have the money to do that. But every time I've ever had a financial challenge in the ministry, God came through. Right. Amen. And the next time I had a challenge, God came through. Now, I'm not talking about overnight, the next 15 minutes. Sometimes we had to stand, and having done all to stand, we continued to stand. And I'm not saying it was easy. No, it wasn't easy at all. We had to stand and just keep standing and keep believing and refusing to quit. But God came through. Now, if we experience a financial challenge, I don't think, but can He do this? Can he do that? No, I'm thinking he's done it before and he can do it again. Right. And he'll do the same for you. Amen? Amen? Listen, I want you to watch this special announcement. We'll be back in just a few moments. Hello, friends and partner, Brother Jerry here. I am celebrating 50 years in the ministry, and to commemorate this special occasion, we put together a very special 50-year anniversary Bible. We call it the Favor Edition. It's a limited edition, and along with it, it's got several of my 
favor sermons and outlines that I've preached all over the world. And I know they'll be a blessing to you. And along with that, you'll get a 40-page scrapbook of photos from beginning of this ministry right up to this present time. And I know that you'll enjoy reading it, looking at all the photos. Maybe you'll even find yourself in one of them. I want to thank you in advance for placing your order right now. And you can do so by going to our website, jerrysavelle.org. All the information on how to order this special Bible is available to you. Do it now. They won't last long, so be one of the first to order this special Bible. Thank you very much. Are you ready to live life to the fullest, a life without limits? Many people set limits on what God can do in their lives. In the eye-opening two-CD series, Don't Limit God, Jerry Savelle shares biblical insight on how to remove the limits and see God move mightily on your behalf. Did you know that God is famous for doing the unexpected? In the two CD series, Expect the Unexpected, you'll learn how to get up every day expecting the unexpected from God. You can experience your greatest victories yet. God wants you to flourish. In the powerful book, The Faithful Shall Flourish, Jerry Savelle teaches how to ensure that you flourish and experience days of heaven on earth. Today is the day. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the No Limits package including Don't Limit God, Expect the Unexpected, and The Faithful Shall Flourish. It's time to shatter the limits you've placed on God and live a life full of His blessings today. I want to encourage you to go to the phone right now and order these products or go online and do it. You know, if you don't do it now, you might forget about it. So I encourage you to go do it right now. We're offering Dad's book, The Faithful Shall Flourish, and then a CD series, Expect the Unexpected. And I listened to this one the other day, Don't Limit God. It's so good. So I encourage you, this is what we've been talking about, Romans 12, 2, renewing your mind. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Well, when you begin to renew your mind, then you will begin to believe that, that nothing is too hard for the Lord and that all things are possible to him that believes. So I encourage you, to not just hear what we're saying today, but begin to do it in your own life. Amen. Begin to renew your mind. You know, I put these in my notes uh, This, this that I wanted to bring up while we were teaching, and so I'll do it here right at the close. Putting limitations on God does nothing to change Him, and it certainly doesn't do us any good. If you refuse to believe that all things are possible with God, then you won't press in in the midst of adversity. You won't have the drive or the determination to persevere, and you'll eventually accept defeat. And that is not God's best. God wants you to take the limits off so that everything He wants you to have, you'll have. I want to remind you as closing Psalm 78, it said, How quickly they forgot what He'd done, the miracles of His working of His hand, they forgot about His power. So don't do that ever again. Keep rehearsing what God has already done for you because He can do it again. Thank you for watching today. And I believe in Jesus' name, you're going to experience some big things from God in the days ahead. Amen. <laughs>